Uh oh, I have a wasp in here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey guys, I do. It's right above my head. All right. Well, anyway, we're going to try to ignore the wasp. You know, I like to have my window open when I'm doing certain things in here. And so anyway, <laughs> if I take off running, I promise I'll be back. But I hope you guys are all doing really well today. Let's see who is in here. I don't know. I maybe have done this time of a live once or twice or three times. I don't know. And I'm in here stressing about, look how dark my lips look and my hair and the bags under my eyes. So I don't know what's going on with the lighting, but I know you guys don't come on here for my beauty. So I'm not going to worry about it. Anyway, hi guys. Thanks for being here. Hey, Carol Coleman. Hey, Karen D. Hi, Sylvia Dinkins. Hey, DB. Hi, Gina Blitzy. Hey, Elevate Artistry. <clears throat> Hi, Rosalind. All right, you listen while you drive, Jennifer. Be careful. Hey, Mrs. JB. Hi, Renee. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Gil McGinnis. All right, Merlinda, hello. Thank you, Gail. Hi, Gina Goins. Hello, Angela. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Porgy Town. Hey, Big Boy Prince. Yeah, I got my blingy shirt on. I've been a little bit, I wouldn't say down, just kind of mellow today. It's like, I need to put something on that peps me up. Thanks, Renee. Hi, Donzel. Hey, Karen G. Hey, Miss Jazzy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good, big boy. How are you? Hey, old school music, Kimball. Patrice, you're supposed to be working. You're not supposed to be in here. You're supposed to be working. Hey, Patricia. So Patrice had a members live earlier today. Hey, Melinda. And she's supposed to be working. Hey, Yvonne, but you know Patrice. She is more giving than than anyone you can meet. Hey, Elevate Artistry. And hey, Cheryl, we were talking in her live. She was talking in her live about how that can really overwhelm you. So she needs to get off here and go do her work and not worry about what's going on here. Of course, you know, I love you, Patrice. You're welcome to stay, but go get your work done. Hey, Cynthia. All right. Hey, Martin. Hopefully I didn't miss anyone. We'll see how this goes. I'm a little bit nervous about this live. Because, you know, I come on here and I do bling, and that's just kind of second nature. And today, and you're working with this camera, and you're working with this camera, and that's it. Today, I want to use my new 16 by 20 heat press for the first time. Now, I plugged it in the other day. I turned it on to make sure it worked, and it did, but I'm going to use it for the first time. What we're going to do today is something that I have a video on, and that is to make sublimation placements. But... When I do videos, whether it's Tumblr videos or, you know, any type of video where you're making a design, some people are curious about how do you make your designs. So we're going to attempt to share my screen. I'm going to attempt to make a design live. And then hopefully I didn't miss anyone. Oh, hey, Naomi. And then I'm going to attempt to move that camera over to where the heat press is. We'll see how that goes. Now, the iPad camera, that's where my microphone is from. So in a little bit when I move that, you won't hear me for a while, but it'll only take me hopefully 30 seconds to get it moved over. So when that happens, chat amongst yourself, but I will be back unless I get too scared and I just run away. All right, so here are, oh, let me put my other camera on. And I actually turned it on a few minutes ago, but I didn't want to put it on the right timer temp because I wanted to show you how you do that. Um, but it's getting really hot here, so I turned it off. So here are the placements. And I wish I still had the ones I made at home because they turned out super cute. Now, notice you can see the table under here. So they are a faux burlap. They are a polyester burlap. And then I would say they are bonded to something. There's a little string there. 
I think they're bonded to something. And then the tops are sewn over to make the seams. So they're not thick, but they were also cheap. <laughs> and so really to me, I think these are like for kids, maybe special occasions, special dinners, kids, birthday parties, and each kid can take home their own party favor. So these aren't meant for me. These aren't meant to be your high end things. They're just meant to be a novelty. So they are thin, but they turn out really nice. So I'm going to use my placemat, some heat resistant tape. I'm going to use my ruler. Um, I have a couple of pieces of butcher paper cut over there because I want butcher paper under my placemat to protect the bottom platen of my heat press. And I want butcher paper on the top to protect the top. Also, and unlike the other video I did, in the other video, I had to press it twice because I didn't have a big press. And then I went and I got this fancier studio one. I bought it off of Amazon. And I, I didn't put the link in the video description because I honestly haven't used it yet. And I don't want to link something unless I've used it. So I love HTV Rant sublimation paper. I don't have any large HTV Rant. So this is the only brand of large I have, and it's Koala brand. I've seen other people use it. I've used it. It works great. So we're going to use that. I already have a piece of that loaded in my printer. And hey, Kelly. Hey, Nicole. So first thing I want to do, I'm getting sidetracked here. Because I don't think I've designed on a live before. And it's a little stressful. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to measure how wide this is. Now, on this ruler, oops, there's a little bit of excess space to the left of where the ruler starts. So pay attention to that. If your ruler has excess over here, don't just butt this up to the edge of the fabric. You want it over the edge so that where the first inch start. <laughs> Where the first inch starts is where your ruler is. And then it comes right over here. So this placemat, which they advertise these as larger than this, I believe. This placemat is about 15th and an eighth inch wide. Okay, do you have an Alexa? Because I'm getting ready to ask mine a question. And so if you have an Alexa and you don't want her telling you the answer, you might you might turn me down. But Alexa, wait, I put her over there now. Okay. Alexa, convert one eighth inch to a decimal. One eighth as a decimal is 0 0.125. One, two, five. Okay. So this placemat design needs to be at least 15.125. I want it to be wider because this placemat is not made perfectly. Just not made perfectly. As I said on my video where I made these, if you want perfect, you might have to make it yourself or, or spend more than, you know, a dollar a placemat. But they're not made perfectly. So even though I need to make sure it's at least 15.125 wide, I'm going to have a little excess space on the edges. And I'm going to do it at 15, what do I want to do it at? 15.4. That's what I'm going to try. And then, hey, Sam. Hey, Creative Kim. Hey, Jennifer Donaldson. Hey, I, let's see. I got to make it bigger because I can't see that far. Ayana, did I say that right? Welcome here. I hope I said that name right. And let's see. I saw Kelly come in. So I think, <laughs> Jennifer, your Alexa wasn't too sure about that. That's funny. Hey, Tarika. All right, so we know that I'm going to make my design 15.4 inches wide, but it only needs 15.125, give or take a little bit. So let's look at the height. Again, remember, you have to burn that extra space. And this one is almost, almost 11 and 3 quarters. And even I know that's 11.75. And so let's take this. I'm just going to take it up to 12 inches. So I'm going to do 15.4 wide by 12 inches tall. Okay. 
So I'm just going to keep those notes really close by here. And here in a minute, I'm going to figure out how to share my screen and try to do this. Okay. Let me see here. So when I share my screen, hey, Carol DeLong, when I share my screen, I don't know that I will see the chat. Maybe I should put it on my phone. Give me just a second because I don't want to miss anyone if you have questions. And this isn't going to be a long drawn out design. It's going to be pretty easy. How do I find my own videos? How do I find my own videos? I don't watch my own videos. Oh, there we go. Your videos live. It's not on here. Are you guys really on here? I don't see it. Videos, shorts, and live. It's not on here. That's really weird. Okay, let me close my door. Here's somebody rumbling around the house. Okay, can someone answer my question in chat, please, so I don't get Marilyn off subject. That's okay. So when Whenever I got a design from Dennis, I used the design space SVG for S10 and put in, oops, 11 by 11 hole. They're too small. So Kelly was his overall design 11 by 11. So whatever his overall design was, if you put that in, the hole should be the correct size. Okay. So let me see. Let me go ahead and open up. You could do this in whatever design software you like to use. Don't do it in Cricut because Cricut's not going to be large enough. You're not going to get a large enough design in Cricut because um, you're printing it on 13 by 19 paper. I don't think you can get a large enough design in Cricut. I'm going to do mine in Inkscape. Inkscape is a free design software, but you can do this in other softwares as well. So like Adobe um, Illustrator. Okay, sorry. Illustrator. I don't know if you can get this large in silhouette or not. Will silhouette let you print larger than 12 by 12? I assume it will, but I'm going to do it in, in Inkscape. Okay, so maybe this is a pretty small screen. I was thinking maybe I can nudge the comments over so that I might be able to see them. A pillowcake's fun. Okay, I can kind of see them. Let me make this a little smaller, and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so let's see, present, share screen. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, I have to choose what to share. Let's share the entire screen. I guess I don't know. Can you guys see that screen yet? Let me know if you can see the screen and if you can see Inkscape. So I'm moving Inkscape around. Can you see that? And I'm going to pause for just a little bit. No, you can't see it. This could be a really short live if I don't get this right. Entire screen. You see the keyboard. Uh -uh. You see the keyboard. No, you can't see it. Holy smokes. Okay. Patrice, you still out there? Okay, let me try this again. I click on present and I say share screen and I say I want to share the entire screen. Okay. Oh, okay. When I hit entire screen, it doesn't let me share the entire screen. Let me go to window. Let's see what this looks like. Now let's bring this to the front. Oh, you still can't see it. Oh no. Patrice. What am I doing wrong? Let's 
Okay, Renee, you can see Inkscape. So can you see this where I'm doing circles on this paper? Um, Patrice, I'm trying to share an Inkscape, the Inkscape software. Um, okay, Rosalind, you see Inkscape? You see this thing um, jumping around here? Because I'm going to be really sad if you guys can't see this and I can't figure it out. You see this DreamYard screen. Rats. So, yeah, I'll change the screen. Okay. So what I first tried to do, okay, I'm going to remove that. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so we want to present, and I want to share my screen, and I tried to say entire screen, and it doesn't let me share. Chrome tab, it won't let me share. I can only share, oh wait, oh, I think I found it. I think I found it. I think I found it. Okay. Thank you guys for trying to help me, and for helping me. Okay, so I have to minimize, okay, so I'll minimize that. Now I'm looking up there at my iPad, and I think you can see it, okay? Now we see it. Okay, so I can see comments over there, but they're pretty little. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get this thing started. And so the first thing that I want to do, let me make, okay, it is large. And can you guys even see my face anymore? Let me know if you can see my face or can you hear me? <laughs> Cause I don't know if you can hear me anymore. Okay. Yes, you can see me and you can hear me. Okay, good. All right, let's get started then. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go right up here. Hopefully you can see this part up. I can't tell from there whether you can or not. It looks like you can't, but up above where my cursor is moving, there is the word file. So we're going to click open the word file and I'm going to say import. Okay, this is in my documents. I have a placement folder. I'm going to double click on that. And this really isn't what I wanted to do first. I'm sorry, you guys, but let's go ahead and bring those in. So I want to open the Woodlands file. And there's all these little images from it. So I want the badger. I'm going to hold down the command. We're going to add the bear. I don't want any of those berries. I want a bird. Let's see. Is that? Yeah, I think that one's cute. We're going to add that bird. Uh, maybe the butterfly. We might use it. And then, Okay, that's not the deer I want. So I have shift held down and I click on it again. It goes away. We're going to add the second deer. We're going to add a fox and a hedgehog. And I'm still holding down the shift. I don't know how I'm going to be able to fit all these on this, but we're going to try. Let's add the owl. What's this owl look like? Well, he's cute too. Um, I want the rabbit, the raccoon. I don't want a squirrel. Okay, I want, no, I don't want that stump because I want one of my animals to be standing on the stump. I want that stump right there. And then which tree do I want? Let's see. No, I don't want that tree. Let's look at this tree. Nope. I want some branches exposed so I can put, hmm, I kind of like that one, so I can put animals on it. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's just bring all those in. So I let go of shift and now I'm going to say open. And when I'm bringing things into Inkscape, 
You can't see anything here. Okay. So they're going to start coming in. I have to hit okay each time. That is so weird. You guys really can't see the pop-up screen. So it says import images and I'm saying okay to each and every one. Hey, Kim. All right. Anything you're putting. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, now you can, Cheryl, once I'm hitting this okay. But I can tell on my iPad that you cannot see. There is a screen right below this where I'm clicking okay to bring each one of those in. So we're going to bring each one of those in until I run out. And the last one I brought in was that tree right there, and my pop-up screen went away. Okay, so for now, I'm going to grab all those. And can you see where I'm unlocking it? I hope right here. Okay, I think you can. Okay, only shows the window. Hopefully I don't have to do anything else in windows like that because that's not good that you can't see anything. Okay, I'm gonna make those small. And then really what I probably should have started with was go ahead and click over here. Go up to File, Document Properties, and first of all, oh no, you can't see this pop-up either. So I have a video on this. I'm so sorry. I have a video. I'm changing the millimeters to inches, and then I'm going to change my paper size to 19 inches wide by 13 inches tall because that's the size of paper that I'm using. So I'm clicking out of that, and my paper size don't you spin on me. My paper size. Oh no. Patrice, how do you do these live? Okay, my paper size changed. Okay, give me just a second. I can feel that my nose is running. Okay, hopefully, 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 everything else I do, I hope other than printing it, you'll be able to see. Okay, let's see where we are. Okay, only shows the actual window I chose. I just hate that you can't see the pop-up windows. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here and I'm going to let this catch up with where I am on the video so that I can see it's really showing it. And it's probably about five seconds behind, maybe 10. Okay, well I'm, okay, you can see I'm on that little rectangle. So I'm gonna click that. And then over here, I'm gonna drag a rectangle. Of course, I don't want it that color. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna size this to my 15.4 by 12 inches. So I dragged it. Now I'm going to select it. And we're gonna make that 15.4 wide. We'll do that. And then I'm going to unlock it and make the height 12 inches. Okay, good. You guys can see where I'm making it 12 inches. And so 15 by 4 by 12, that's the size of my placemat. Now, there is something else I want to bring in. And that's my background. My, my background is just going to be polka dots. And so I will, when I'm done with this live, I'll link the video that I did making these so that you can see all the steps instead of just how I do the design. Okay, so we're going to bring in some polka dots. And I want them to be pretty mellow tone, just like a gray or beige. So I'm going to bring in this set right here, and that's huge. So I've clicked on it, and I'm going to click the padlock closed so I don't lose the dimension or the proportion, because I don't want circles closer sideways than tall, if that makes sense. So the width of mine is by 15.4. So I'm going to start by going 15.4. Just 
Share screen, click entire screen, minimize. Okay, thanks, Karen D. You might be behind because I've already gone past that and I didn't do a very good job, but it is what it is at this point. Okay, so this is going to be my background. So I'm going to take my rectangle. Let's bring it to the front so you can't see it, but I go up to object and I say raise to top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, both of these, whoops, let's take both of these images and I'm going to make sure that they are aligned correctly. If you could see, you'd see I'm going to object, align and distribute. Okay, I think now these popped up. So you go way up here to object above that, and then in the line and distribute, I'm gonna make sure they're in the center. And then let's go ahead and align those at the top. Then this rectangle, I wanna change that to a path. So I'm gonna go object or path. So path is up here, object to path. Now this is the hardest part right here. Then I'm gonna take those, and you just have to know the steps. So if you write down the steps, you watch the video that I did, you'll see all that. So I'm gonna go to object. And remember this red is the size I want. And I'm gonna go to clip. And then I'm going to click on set inverse clip. And here it is. And again, you couldn't see those pop-ups either. So check out the link. Check out the link that I'll put under the video when I'm done so that you see the tutorial that shows you every step along the way. And again, I'm sorry that those aren't working. All right, so now the rest is just moving the things where you want them and resizing them. So I think I wanna use this woodland tree. And so I'm gonna raise it to the top and I'm gonna move it kind of over here. I like this tree because it's narrow. It's going to give me a lot of room for the other animals and, or for the animals and such. So the proportions are locked and so I'm just going to drag this. Now remember my design is a little bit larger than I need it. So I don't want this all the way to the bottom because it might get cut off a little bit. I don't want it all the way to the left or the top because it might get cut off just a little bit. And welcome in everybody that's come in. So let me go ahead and move these guys over a little bit. In Inkscape, if you're not just clicking on an item like that, I must have just clicked on that item. If you're not just clicking on one item to get everything together, you go all the way around them and then just slide them over. And then I want to go ahead and make sure these are all going to be on top. So I have to go to Object and Raise to Top. Okay. Now, I'm probably not going to use that tree, and I'm probably not going to use that tree. Let's go ahead and try to blow up what we're working with just a little bit. And I'm pretty much done with that part over there. So I'll blow it up just a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Now, all these things are way too large, so we're going to have to make each one of them smaller. And this is not going to be lifelike. So it's not going to look, the proportions aren't going to be right. Like this little raccoon guy, he's probably going to be much bigger in comparison to the deer than he really is. But I want to put him on top of this stump. So right now I have him over it, but you can see it's going behind it. So unfortunately you can't see this, but I go to object and I'd say raise to top. And notice how his feet now are in the right place. Okay, the bunny's way too large. Let's just make these smaller for now. The owl, I'm gonna try to put the owls in the tree. Oops, that is not what I wanna do, so I'll hit back. The owls I'm gonna try to put over in the tree somewhere. And they might look like they're just kind of hovering. See how he has things under his feet? He's just going to look like he's kind of hovering over there, but it's going to be okay. And he's probably going to be in proportion to the tree too large, but this is for a three-year-old kid who doesn't care. Okay, let's make this out a littler. And for now, we will place, actually I want to move this out over here 
because there's not much color to that out. So the one that I'm moving now, I move this one that has more color over here to kind of balance my design. Okay. Okay, you guys sticking with me even though you can't see all the pop-ups? A table runner to match. Oh no, that would be cute though. Especially if you were doing like a kid's birthday party where you have a sublimated placemat for each kid that they get to take home. All right. Um, there are so many cute animals in there in here, and I don't think they're all gonna fit. But I do want I want the deer. And I'm probably going to just have to start making things a lot smaller because they look ridiculous compared to the tree. Uh, get this little bird in there somewhere. Let's just place him right here. And then the butterfly. Let's just place him. I might use him with the name. So we're just going to put him up here and reserve him. Okay, the bear. And then, oh, okay, so there's two of the raccoons. I think I like this, the artwork on this one a little bit better than this one. This one just looks like he has, you know, a rabbit around his nose and going over his eyes. So we're going to use this one instead. Make it smaller. And then once again, we're going to move him to the top. So I go to object and raise to top. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of him. Move the butterfly out of the way. I don't find this thing to be that interesting. Oh, he's kind of cute. Now, oh, is that a moose? I think I'm going to get rid of the moose. Not yet. Let's bring him back. And let's make this guy a lot smaller. And then we're going to start lining them up, kind of like they're a little Woodlands family. Okay, so I'm going all the way around these two items. I'm going to move those. Let's move them this way so we can kind of put the bear in the middle. Nope, we're going to have the bear at this end. I want a little bit of balance between the tall things. So the deer is going to be tall and the bear is going to be tall. And so I'm going to keep them to the outside. Okay, so I have both those things selected. I'm just using the right arrow on my keyboard to move those over. And then this bear, we're going to make him, I don't know, let's keep him about the same size. And then the rabbit's going to be smaller. And we're going to move the deer over. Well, let's go this way. And then bring this guy down. And then we can fit, maybe we should fit him over here. And then we can fit this little guy. Can you guys hear the wind? Let's fit him right there. Okay. Now, here's what I think. He has some beautiful color. He's pretty light. So we're going to move him over to there. Raise to the top. And then we're going to put this guy in between to get a little bit more color. And I think that's going to be it. We're going to get rid of, see ya. Going to get rid of him. Okay. So we're going to move all these together a little bit. And that deer is way too big. He should be much smaller. Okay, so we're going to add a name to this. So I don't want you to think it's going to be this boring. It's going to get better. Let's move Smokey over a little bit. Okay, so did all that make sense? <laughs> Thanks, Donzel. You're always so positive. Hey, Deborah Garrett. Hey, Kristen. This 40s plus wooden carrot was super cute. Thank you. Okay. So the butterfly is going to come back in a minute. For now, we're going to put him over on the white so we can see him. Now I want to personalize this. And so that little bird needs to move up. He looks weird. 
And let's see, should I move him up and this guy? Nope. Okay, I'm just going to leave you there. And we're going to make the bear a little bit bigger. He's too small for a bear. Okay, so now I want to personalize this. So I'm going to add a name. But the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and put a long rectangle across this. So I'm going to click right back over on my rectangle. Hopefully you can see my little cursor moving over here on the left. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm just going to drag a rectangle. I don't want it red. I want this one to be white. I'm going to click on white. And then I want an outline under it. And I want that outline to be pretty dark. I think I might even do it black. So it kind of pulls out some of this color and it's much darker than the background. So let's go ahead and click on the rectangle again. And we're going to drag a slightly larger one. Let's see. Okay. And I'm going to turn that really dark charcoal. And so I want it backwards. I don't want it to cover the white. So I'm going up here to object right up here. And then I'm saying to lower it. So it goes below the white. All right. Now I'm just going to select those two items and I can do that by dragging all the way around them. And then over here, we're going to align them on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And I think that looks fine. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now that's going to get cut off in my design, which is fine. I don't really want the black showing on the side. Matter of fact, let's make it a little bit larger so that I know it's not going to show. Okay. Because I have plenty width on the paper. Whoops. I have plenty width on the paper. So it doesn't matter if it sticks out a little bit extra. Now notice that it is on top of the tree and some of those animals. So first thing I'm going to go object and I'm going to group those together. So I hit object and you couldn't see it, but the word group was down here. Then I'm going to start putting, moving them back. So I'm going to move that object back. I know, Gia, it looks like a family picture, doesn't it? Hey, Gina. Thanks, Karen D. And before I go live and try any other designs on live, I will figure out why you can't see those pop-ups. Maybe. I'll have to ask someone. We'll ask someone that knows. Okay, so right here is object. I'm going to click on object, and then I can see the word lower. I have lower and lower to bottom. If I lower it all the way to the bottom, you won't see it. Well, let me show you. It would be behind the polka dots. So we don't want that. Let me click back. But what I want is object and lower. And I might have to do that a few times. So see, this guy's head popped out. So it's now below this layer. But I want it below this guy and below the tree. So I'm probably going to have to do that two more times. So object, lower. And there's that out. And object and lower. Okay, perfect. Now I want to type in the name. Oh, which person do I want to give this to? Well, before I decide, I'm going to take all these animals and just slightly move them to the right. Okay. Which one would like this one? I think Tucker would. So I'm going to go over here to the text tool, or I could go up here. It says text above here. But I'm going to click on text tool. You can see that over there. And then I'm going to click where I want to type. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I can move it around. So I'm going to do all caps. I have my caps lock on. And I'm typing Tucker. And this font is hobo standard. And you see it right here. And it, it used that because that's the last font I used when I was on this computer. And I've used Tucker for most of the things that I've made for Gideon and for Sophia and for my other niece and nephew. Okay, so we're going to hit the select tool and then that way I can move it down. That's way too big. So I can either change it up here or I just want to visualize it. So I'm just going to drag it with the proportions locked 
and move it over some. And I don't even want to use the alignment feature for this. I'm going to use just what I think looks good. And I don't mind that it's a little lower, closer to this side than this side. Well, maybe I'm going to, let's move it up one. Okay, here's where the butterfly is going to come back in. Does a boy want a butterfly? Boy's getting a butterfly. We're going to turn it, just kind of make it cute. And we're going to slightly, where do I want to put it? Slightly put it, I think it's under that R. Yes, so we're going to slightly put it there. It is under the R layer or the text layer. So with this selected, I'm going up to object and raise to top. And then if I hit shift and plus, I can look closer and I can see it really is on the top. Okay, here's one thing that I don't like. That is, and you know I'm a little bit OCD. Thank you. The printer that I'm using today is an Epson Ecotank 15000 and I have Hippo Sublimation Ink in it. My other smaller printer is an Epson Ecotank 2760, I think. Yes, 2760, and I have Cosmos Ink in it. Um, but what I don't like is that the, the whole banner thing here is on top of these polka dots, but not on top of these. So I want to shift it up or down. I want to come down a little bit. I think there's too much blank space in there. Oh, I'm accidentally taking the owl with me. <laughs> I can move the owl back up. Okay. What do we think of that? You think that looks okay? I think it looks okay. So let's move, okay. We're gonna move this owl back up some. That looks pretty good. And that's my design. You guys buy that? Think that works? Of the days, lost track of it. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Miss Jazzy. Okay, so we're going to stick with this. Now, you have to print in the mirror image. <laughs> On a recent video where I was making these lip, these lip balms, and I started to mirror my image, and then I realized, wait a minute, that's not sublimation. I rarely ever print anything anymore that's not reversed or mirrored, so I almost messed those up. But I'm going to select everything, and then I'm first I'm going to go object so you see object right here or you see where my cursor is because object is above that window and then i hit group which i know you can't see okay you see that those inside lines went away so it's all grouped then i can either mirror this now or i can tell my printer to mirror i like to do it now and you guys like that should i move tucker over i think i'm fine I think I'm fine. I'm fine, right? Okay, so we're selecting the whole thing, and you can't see it, but object is up here, and then flip horizontal, and there it is. So now I'm ready to print. I do have my paper in my printer. I'm hoping that my print settings actually show. I don't do anything special though. Hey, Juana. Thank you, Gina. Gina might be behind. <laughs> hey, love and live show. Thanks, Rosalind. Okay, thanks, D. I like them staggered too. All right, so I'm going to hit Command P for print, and I can tell on there you cannot see it. But I'm going to tell you everything I'm doing, which is very minimal. When I got this printer, I printed for a while just using the default drivers that came on it. I didn't download special drivers off of Epson's website, it was printing nicely. But I know that people get better prints when they print using the special drivers. So I downloaded the drivers and I could never get a good print from it. So I deleted those installed drivers and I went back to just the reset to the factory, factory settings or whatever. And so the only things that I do is I make sure that I'm printing on one side of the paper. 
and then I make sure that the color mode is on. It's not black or white. And then across the top, I go to advanced and I change it from normal to high print. That's it. That is all I do. So before I print it though, I want to do a reality check because you know we want it 15.4. Now, because these two sides extend beyond the polka dots, my size is now 15.78. I don't care. That's just this excess here and the excess here. The height is still 12 inches. And so at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and print it. And so I got to go back and change it to, it's on, it defaults to color, but I have to go back and change it from normal to high. And it should start printing any second. Now, it sometimes I get something on my printer that says you're, what you sent doesn't match what the printer thinks it is, and I have to do something, and it's it's beeping at me, so I'm gonna have to do that right now. It says the paper size and type in the rear doesn't fit, doesn't match the specified print settings. So I have to say next, and then I say go ahead and use my specified print settings. And it tells me to load my paper. And I say I've already installed it and it starts off great. Now, this is a large print and I'm doing it on the high quality setting. And so it's going to take a while for this to print. And so we are going to now I'm going to stop sharing and come back to the regular screen. Okay figure out where the regular screen is. There we are. And for some reason, I'm still really dark. I don't know why my hair looks dark, my bags look darker, and everything looks darker today. Hey, Gorgeous Rose. Thank you, Spilling the Diversity. Hey, Nicole Reeves. All right, so it's gonna take a little while to print. And so how about if we move over to the new heat press, I'm gonna move this camera over there. Hey, Dumps. Hey, Uni. So I'm going to move the camera over there. While I move the camera over there, I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the stage. Otherwise, you're going to see dizziness and all that while I'm getting it set. It is going to take me, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to get it set up. And so you're not, not minutes, seconds. So you are not going to see me or hear me for about 15 to 20 seconds. So, chat amongst yourself, but when you when I come back, you should be pointed directly at the larger new heat press. And again, I got it off of Amazon. I don't have a link below because I've never used it, and I don't want to link something I haven't personally used and that I really like. Okay, so give me just a minute, and I'll be back. Okay, so I wanted to turn that on so I could really see where I want this camera. And let me, let me try to adjust it a little bit. Hopefully you guys can hear me now. I think you can. Okay, so here is the new heat press. And I'm just going to come around here and see if you can see it. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. You guys can see all my stuff hanging up over there. And you can see I have a little bit of a mess on that end of the table. But does that look good? Can you guys see that? And can you hear me again?
I'm going to take a drink of tea just while that's getting caught up. But let me know if let me know if you can hear me, okay? Okay, I saw Naomi say she could hear me. So I was saying the other day, there's one minor thing about this press that I'm not in love with. And that is that where you change your settings is right, right down here, right down here. So you do have to stand to the side to do it, or you can move this down slightly. If you move it too far, the timer starts going down and you can't change the settings anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and first turn it on. Now, hopefully you see where my hand is. There is a red rocker switch here. So I'm going to turn that on. And then you probably can't really see this screen. Let's see if I can't get it where you can see it. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, there's the screen. Hopefully you can see it a little bit. Let me move around to the other side. Okay, so here's what happens. If I pull this down, you see where right now it's up to 143 degrees and the time right now is set for 15 seconds. Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna turn it back a little bit straight. If I pull it down too far, it's gonna click There it clicked and those seconds start going down. So let me go ahead and put it back up. So I either have to stand to the side and change it or I pull it down and before it clicks, I can change it. So that is my annoyance with this machine, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, so now it's kind of weird working around a camera. I'm gonna hit temperature and I'm gonna move this up from 325 to, I'm going to go 385. I don't remember what I used on the prior time. I'm going to go 385. And then I just changed it to Celsius. So I'm going to hit temperature again. It's flashing because it's going to start heating up here in a minute. I'm going to hit time. Okay, what am I doing wrong? You know this is new. Okay, I think if I just sit still for a minute, that's going to... Oh, my print's done. Okay, what am I doing wrong? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, let's hit time again. There, okay, finally it did. It timed out after a while and it started raising the temperature again. I thought it was on Celsius because it only says 174. It wasn't on Celsius. It just, that's how hot it is right now. Okay, so now we're gonna change time. There's an up arrow and a down arrow. Oops, hit time, timed out. This is really not a good way to show you, but it's what I have right now. Okay, we're gonna change this. Let's go ahead and do 60 seconds. So here in a minute, that zero is gonna quit flashing and it's just going to be set. It's gonna to continue to climb up to temperature. There we go. No, I don't want you on 15. Okay, I must have to do something else. Let me hit time again see if that does it. Okay, that did it. Like I said, I haven't used this yet. I turned it in, I kind of played with the controls, and that was it. It's now up to 194, 195. So we're going to go back over to the table, and we are going to fix our design on our placemat. So let me remove you just for a minute again. Okay, I think I need another camera. What do you think? We make it work, but I do think I need another camera. All right, so um, 
Actually, there's really nothing else for you to see on the computer. So unless, yeah, I'll work on it right here. Okay, so here it is. It is huge. And if you're familiar with sublimation, you know that your colors are going to be really dull until you get this under the heat press. But there it is, super cute. I'm going to take my placemat. Let me move these out of the way. I'm going to flip my placemat upside down. So here's the top side of the placemat. I'm going to put it up against the sublimation print. And why does it look bigger than the sublimation print? Yeah, I hope I don't have to reprint this. Let me see. How did I get that off? Okay, there it is to the edge. Okay, this works. This works. Let's see if this one still works. No, that one's slight. To me, this one is slightly going over the edge of the design. So we're going with this one. And that one's going to work just fine. Okay, so I'm making sure that the whole sublimation blank is on top of ink. And these are not well made, but they work for fun things. So I want to kind of have it centered from top to bottom and side to side. Okay, whoops. Nope, that's going to be fine. So we're going to tape down. I'm going to tape down on all four corners at least so I know it doesn't shift. And I'll probably even throw a piece of tape right here because that is very close to the edge. And then let me look and see what my print, my heat press is up to. It's up to 356. And so it takes a little longer. And I remember Patrice, you know, turning hers on decently early. The HCB run heats up really fast. Um, but a lot of the traditional ones just don't heat up that fast. Okay. So we're going to make sure. I'm going to tape right here because that's decently close to the end of the design or the edge of the design. And this looks perfectly fine up here. No worries. Hey, Patrice Williams. Hey, Tionda. Yeah, your heat press nation 16 by 20 is also kind of slow. Yeah, we just have to get used to not having them, you know, heat up as fast as some of the others. Like my other traditional press that I got off of Amazon, it heats up slowly too. I, I would say slowly, more slowly than the HTV run. And I just messed that piece of tape up. All right, I have a little bit of concern up here, so I'm probably going to be shifting. I know I'm going to be shifting this top edge over because I have a lot of extra over here. Hopefully my tape doesn't mess up that design. Okay, so let's pull this back over a little bit. We're going to hope for the best. My first couple came out so nicely on the first try, so I have high hopes for this one too. But I do want tape where it is really close to the design so it doesn't accidentally not get covered by the design. So let's see. Well, let me just bring this down. See how that's barely above the design or the, the design is barely above the placemat? So I would say next time I would probably, I would probably add a little bit more than what I did this time. So this time I did my design 15.4 by 12. Next time I would probably do it 
a good 15.5, if not 15.75, and 12, maybe 12.25. But remember, you can have any of your design close to the edges. Oh my gosh, that takes 30 minutes to heat up that much. Wowzer. Okay, let me see what we're up to. Yeah, we're only up to 301 degrees. I should have turned that on sooner. So we're just we're just gonna have to sit here for a few minutes. Um, the other thing is, I did pre-press these mats, but it's been well. How long ago was it when I made that video? It's been since I pre-pressed them. It's probably been two weeks. So in all reality, I should have pre-pressed this today, and I didn't. Hopefully, it turns out okay. All right, let's go ahead and get this a little more equal. Carol DeLong, your new surgery is pretty cool. Yeah, Dee, so I gave the placemats to my friend, and she gave them to her kids, and she said they did love them. Now, who doesn't like their own name? Now, their little boy, he, he probably recognizes his name, but he's not a big reader yet. He's pretty young. Um, but the girl, she knows how to read and all that. And uh, the lady I gave them to, she did say that pink is her favorite color. What else? Oh, she says she loves butterflies. And I had butterflies on that. And I didn't even know that stuff. So that turned out pretty lucky. Okay, what did I miss? Tianda coming in. Hope you're doing really well today, Tianda. Okay, took them to HH. Okay, what's HH? And let them choose 3D stickers that represented them. Young girl is having a blast with stickers. HH. I don't know what that is. Hey, Ethel. Welcome. Hi, Whitney. So for those of you that weren't here at the beginning, we're doing place. Well, we're doing a place map today. And I attempted to show how to design it. And even though I didn't know what I was doing with StreamYard, not being able to share the whole screen, that'll change. But if you missed that, I did show how to design this placemat using images from Creative Fabrica. And the other two that I did, I used images from Creative Fabrica as well. Thanks, Donzel. Oh, Hobby Lobby. How did I not know that? How did I not know that? All right, let's see what we're up to. We're up to 336, so it'll be a few more minutes. And so... If I knew how to share my screen right, I'd actually show you those other placemat designs. But I will put the link in the video description to where I did true tutorial. And again, on that one, you can see the whole screen, not just, you can see the pop-ups and everything. So I'll add that as soon as we get off here. Let's see, there's only so much power you can get out of a regular power outlet. The larger the presses, the longer it will take to warm up when powered up with a standard wall outlet. Okay, thanks, Brian. And I always do. I either plug mine directly into the wall or I use these heavy-duty industrial-type extension cords. I never use just a basic extension cord. Find the, you find the 16 by 20 gets really hot, so be prepared to sweat. Oh, so it radiates a lot of heat into your room. Um, so Leslie, my shirt just says happy, and then it has kind of circles around it. I was saying earlier I put it on because I have been kind of in a mellow mood today, and I needed to perk up a little bit. Hey, Stacy Collins. Yeah, Dim has it there. It says... Happy. Okay, and then here's what Brian said. Um, D, I mostly use Inkscape because that's what I learned on. I don't like paying monthly subscriptions for anything. Um, I have a creative monthly subscription, but I paid $47 to extend it, and I'm extended for about two more years, and I use it all the time. But, like, I don't have a Cricut monthly membership. I don't do the Caesar monthly membership. And now all the Adobe things go to where you have to have a, a monthly thing or an annual thing. It's not a one-time you get to use it forever. Inkscape's free. 
and so I use it. So what I learned on, now I use Silhouette sometimes too, but I prefer Inkscape just because it's what I learned on. Uh-huh, Naomi, it does. Okay, Brother Airflow 3000. So that's your serger, Carol, is that right? Let's see. Not sure how long ago, but can't stand subscriptions. So on my work computer, which this is my my well, this is my personal computer. It's what I use for YouTube stuff. I don't have Adobe Illustrator. On my work computer, I have Adobe Illustrator, and I haven't really used it because I learned Inkscape first. And then once I got into rhinestones and I bought the Silhouette Business Edition, I started using it some. And I find that some things are easier to do in Silhouette, some things are easier to do in Inkscape. And probably, probably that's how most people feel is they like different programs for different aspects of their designs. Oh, you have it till 2030, that's awesome. <laughs> that's longer than I have it for. Okay, let's see, we're up to 379 and I set it for 385. So, um, I'm going to go, I don't think you probably want me to drag you over there just to press this. Here's what I'm going to do though. I am, let's see, I buy, I buy butcher paper by these big rolls. I get mine off of Amazon. I think some people get them from Sam's or Costco, but I'm going to put a piece of butcher paper under it. I'm going to flip my my design over because I want the paper side up and you might be able to see Tucker right there so when the paper comes off Tucker will be readable and then I'm going to put a piece of paper on top. Koala brand I don't remember if it bleeds through the back. My HTV romp paper has never bled through the back. I still always use a piece of paper on top of it just to be just to be safe. And I can reuse that piece of paper over and over. But it is so much cheaper to buy butcher paper than it is to replace your the pad on your heat press. And easier. Especially if the pad isn't removable. So the pad on this, I can tell I could take it off. It's glued down in certain spots. So if I ever have to replace it, I can. But it's glued down in certain spots so it's not shifting around. Alright, so I'm going to get this started. And then I'll come back over here. And it's going to go for, I think I set it for 50 seconds. I don't even remember if that's what I used in my video. But, you know, there's kind of an area in there that if you get in that range, it's typically okay. Okay, so you can probably hear me. I want to make sure that this is all on the platinum and that I'm not going to miss part of it. And it has a pull-out drawer. I forgot to show you that. So it has a little roll-out pull-out drawer. Not a drawer, but the bottom platinum pulls out, which I love. I haven't used it yet, but I love the fact that you can do that. And what else? When you put it down, it starts counting down automatically. And so I don't know how loud it's going to be. We'll see here in a minute. Okay. So Carol, you have a YouTube channel? I, didn't, I don't think I knew that. What kind of videos do you have on it? I need to find it. Or maybe you're just starting. Oh, before you upload videos. Yes, and Naomi has a channel. Okay, I see there's a little YouTube sign by your name. So, Okay, so there it's going. Let's bring it over. And go ahead and turn it off. Okay, so the beep keeps beeping, but it wasn't super, super loud and annoying. Move this over. 
Okay, so let's see. Did any income through? I don't see any ink on this at all. So I feel like it didn't lead through the back. So we're going to keep that. And then let's see what it looks like. Okay, I see a little issue. And I noticed it after I pressed it down. There is, I have a big Teflon sheet on the press. And I noticed after I pressed it down that the Teflon sheet was folded up and it was under this paper. So there's a little bit of a pressure issue right there from that Teflon sheet. And it looks like it's quite a ways up. I didn't have the pressure on high enough. Look at that. That must be the issue. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Okay. If you guys want to stay on while I redo that, I didn't even think about adjusting the pressure. Let me go see this. I forgot what crafter forgets to check the pressure. Okay. So. There we go. Make that pressure more. I'm going to reprint this and redo it. If you want to stay, I'd love to have you stay. If, if you've seen enough of my shenanigans, my issues, then I hope to see you on a video soon. But I'm going to reprint this and increase the pressure. And I'm actually going to make my design a little bit larger. So I think I told you I'd probably go up to 12 and a half. Let's go ahead and take that up. And what did I say on the other? 15.75? I don't know. We're going to do it at 16. That way it stays fairly proportionate. I don't squeeze anything too much. So now I'm doing... Now I'm doing 16 by 12 and a half. Go ahead and get that started printing. And I think I turned the heat press back on, but let me make sure so that we don't have to wait for that thing to heat up. Okay, here it's starting, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what happened. Okay, you can easily see. Oh, remember when I was pulling on the corners and such also? See how that and that and this were left on here? It's darker there, so less ink transferred to my mat. And then, yeah, move my trash cans over here. Then you can see it looks terrible going through there and then up that way. So I'm going to do two things. Remember I said I had pre-pressed them, but it had been a couple weeks. I'm going to pre-press my, okay, it's still up at 385. I'm going to pre-press my mat. And then I didn't even think about the pressure. It's my first time to use it. I'm going to go ahead and add some pressure. So let me run over there and pre-press this real quick. Hey, Kevin and Penny. Thanks, Rosalind. Uh, Ming area to reorganize. I will catch. Okay, Carol. Have a good evening. Oh, thanks, Dee. I love to be stuck with you for the long haul. I'm just sorry that I didn't even think about the pressure and I really should have preheated. What do we always say? We say preheat. Get it flat. Get it smooth. Get the moisture out. And then I did see the the white, so I have this white Teflon sheet, it came with it, and I noticed that this end was flipped up, so I don't think that had anything to do with it, because I don't know if that would cause all of this, I think the biggest thing was I didn't pre-press it, it went real smooth, and you know, I was pulling at different angles instead of having it really smooth and flat, I think that's what did it. 
we we shall see in a minute thanks Yvonne hey Renee so Renee I kind of messed up my first one and so I'm re pressing pre-press helps for it would Chris I can't believe I didn't what was I thinking what was I thinking but I can reuse this piece of butcher paper and then I don't think I'm not gonna reuse this one because it has ink on it. If I wanted to, I could cut it down and save the inside and use it. But I'm not gonna do that right now. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'm gonna pre-press this while it's pre-pressing. I'm gonna run in there and get another piece of butcher paper cut off. I didn't expect for this issue. I did not expect to have this problem. Okay, let's see. Had a piece in there pre cut. Well, that's probably a long enough pre press, don't you think? Okay, let's see about that pressure. I think you need a little more pressure. Okay, I'll go ahead and put this white piece back on the press so I don't forget that. And it looks like we're about maybe 60% done with the print. Do I need a mat? Um, so there is, oh, you mean like a pressing pillow? And there's that wasp again. I see you. Um, I've never used a pressing pillow really with things like this. I don't know if that would help. What do you guys think? Is that, and is that what you're talking about, Mary Dixon? Are you talking about like a pressing pillow or something else? Maybe that would help. I mean, cause see, I still see the way this is made. There's slight slight lumps and bumps but i'm hoping by adding the pressure that that fixes the issue okay so yes mary's talking about a pressing pillow i don't i don't have a pressing pillow big enough for this i don't think this one might be but I just, I've never used a pressing pillow for these types of things. Mm -hmm. Boy, that is almost the exact size, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it without it. I don't feel like I should have to use one with the press. We're going to try it again, see if it works without it. Unless everybody says they use a pressing mat. Hey, Tracy. Welcome here. All right, so we are actually, we're getting very close to being done printing that. And so, so far, for those of you that are coming in, we made this, but look at that terrible white streak. I didn't pre-press it, and I, this is the first time I've used the press with anything under it. Other than turning it on, it's the first time I've pressed with it. And I didn't I didn't think about adjusting the pressure or checking the pressure. Dinged on me. So it is pretty cute, but I don't like it. I don't like it at all. All right. 
Prints done. I do usually like to let my prints um, dry out a little bit, but I think by the time we get this taped on, it'll be fine. Now, remember I went up in size, oops, I went up in size this time. Chris, do another one. But I don't think that pillow is quite big enough. I don't, I really don't. Okay. I feel comfortable having more space outside the design. I can see that some of these animals' feet are just almost ready to peek out from under that. Okay, so this time I'm going to tape one side and I'm going to smooth it down and tape the other side. And I'm going to also try to smooth it as I go. So let's go ahead and kind of smooth it down. Do it up here. And then just hold it in place better. I'm going to go ahead and put one in the middle. I don't feel like I need it for the coverage, but since I'm going to smooth it this way and try to pull it, I wanted to have it there. This corner is fine. Okay. Hopefully it works out better this time. So remember we have to, you know what I might as well just... Well, this piece of paper has some weird spots on it. We're going to be okay. It's never been used, so I know it's not... I know it's not a celebration age. I have a feeling it was from the factory because this was the end of the row. What an issue I'm having today. Okay, flip this over. Now notice the wrinkles in my paper. I wonder if that would have any bearing on it. I'm not going to put that wrinkly paper on top of it because I think that could affect the pressure. Okay, it did not bleed through the top last time. So we're going to go with this. All right, did you, pre yes, I pre-pressed this one. I did pre-press this one. All right, and I'm put this back. All right, let's hope we get a better result this time. Yeah, D, Tucker probably wouldn't even notice, but I don't know. He's my Greek nephew. I feel a little bad. So, okay. Renee, no hubby home tonight. Only has to worry about the cats. Oh, yeah. So here it's 440 Central Time. And I'll be done. If you need to go, go. But I'll be done. And this says there's like... 13 seconds, 12, 11, and then we'll, we'll see what it looks like. If it still has wrinkles, I don't know. My first two didn't. I hope it was a me problem. Comment off. I hope so, Gina. I hope so. Now I'm nervous. I haven't really had things like that happen. I'm like, what? What? Okay. Okay. I don't see it this time. Yay. Okay. So the pre press and checking that pressure. 
Again, what crafter doesn't check the pressure? I switched side and used my new heat press though. All right, I'm just gonna throw that on. This one turned out super cute. Super, super, super cute. Okay, let me hold it up here. See how adorable that is? My nails are a mess, but I love that. Now I'm smiling before I was angry. This one's spot on. Spot on. Okay, so let's see if I turn my press off. Yes. So I'm very happy with this one. It's really cute. I think he's going to really like this. Hopefully, even though you guys couldn't see, see the pop-up screens, because I didn't know what I was doing on screen sharing. Hopefully it still helped a little bit. And just knowing how to use rectangles to put under things. And I just love all these polka dots for the back of it. It would have been cute without them, but I just think having the whole back built in with something super, super simple and fairly light like the polka dots, I think that, I think that really adds to it. The two I did before I had pink in the background and the other one might have been the same color i did one with dinosaurs in it before and i did one with a tree that was made out of like butterfly leaves and they were flying i will link that video in the video description as soon as we get off here hey delanda i will link that in the video description as soon as we get off here thanks alice um thanks kawanda okay let me see nice let me go back in the comments Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Y'all are so positive. Stuck it out with me after my first mishap. Oh, is that right? Yeah, his name's Tucker. I used to call him Tuck the Tank because he was just a really chunky little baby. But thank you guys so much. Let's see. Yeah, it does. It doesn't distract from anything. It just gives a little bit of visual appeal. Start over Delanda, Delanda, Delanda. Here, I'm starting over. I did the design. I used Inkscape. I used images out of Creative Fabrica. I printed on my Epson EcoTank 15,000. The first one that I did on my new heat press, I forgot to pre-press the material and I forgot to check the pressure. So that's the cruddy one I got. So I reprinted, made my design slightly larger. If you get these, I would say 16 by 12 and a half. That's going to give you extra space. So leave some blank space outside of your image so that when it gets cut off, you don't lose anything really important. So I pre-pressed my second sublimation placemat. I checked the pressure. I increased the pressure. And that's what I got. Looks great. I love it. I think Tucker will love it. Now I just need to figure out something to do for his brother because I did. No, I haven't done his sister's yet either. I need to do Piper one. So anyway, I'm going to put that link in the video description as soon as I get off of here. That way you see everything, every detail. Um, that way you can follow along if you want to use Inkscape. If you use a different design software, it's going to be similar. They're going to have similar similar. Um, features, but it's just going to be called something different. But again, Inkscape's free. You might try it out. So, hey ZGM, thank you guys for being here in this middle of the afternoon tutorial. I appreciate it. And don't forget, Patrice will be on tonight. So, my well, Naomi, I've only used it the two times. I like it. Oop, there's that wasp again. I like it. I'll go ahead and add the link. Um, now you know electric things, electronic things, electric things, they can stop. You can get a limit, but this one had very, very good reviews. I love having the larger size. The next thing that I'm going to do with this larger size is I'm going to make some pillow, I'm going to sublimate some pillowcases because I've done pillowcases before, once or twice on my channel, and I had to use a small design because I didn't have a very big heat press. 
And so I'll use the 13 by 19 paper, make my design, and I'll use that heat press. I like it. Um, it's fairly easy to use. The one thing is, you know, I need to learn exactly how to get the temperature and the time to change. That's just a matter of using it more than once. And then the one thing that I was a little bit not loving was the fact that you have to stand to the side to do the time and temp. I really can't show it on camera very well. Or you have to pull the thing down slightly to change the time and temp. I guess the only way to improve that would have been to have a higher back so that it's a little bit higher up. I love that there's going to be a rollout drawer or a rollout platen. Haven't used that yet. But I think on thick sweatshirts and things like that, that's going to be a finger protector. Um, and I like that it was $319 because I didn't want to pay a ton of money for it. And I did buy that heat press. I paid for it. So despite the fact I could have had one the same size or a little bigger for free, but I bought that one. So anyway, I will add that link and I'll add the link to the, the video where I did this step by step. Oh, thanks, Dumps. Yeah, I have a few Inkscape tutorials just to kind of get you used to it. Um, maybe I can do some more of those. But anyway, Patrice will be on tonight. And then Eve, the baby's booty, she ought to be on Sunday night. Delon is on here. She'll be on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Angel B is usually on Mondays. Dumps does some lunchtime things. And Naomi has videos that come out from time to time. She's very thorough. I like her videos. And now I know there's more people that started a YouTube channel. So anyway, thank you guys for being here and I'll probably see you next Thursday. Bye.